This is the motor reducer, the first part of my custom RC build. Seems simple, right? No, it wasn't. It took me hours of modeling and multiple failed attempts to get this right. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to model these pulleys and belt, highlight some important insights and mistakes, so you can easily apply this new knowledge in your project. Let's start with constraints. I'm going to use a brushless motor with 3.17mm shaft and an XL70 belt. I'd also don't believe that printed captain could survive with my motor, that's why I also bought a brass one. And lastly, since I'm about to build specific 1 to 10 scale car, I'm limited in space. That means the reducer should be as compact as possible, because the chassis overall width is limited to 13 cm. The gearbox size mainly depends on pulley sizes and the distance between them. Fortunately, all dimensions are easily calculated with math. However, when I started preparing for this video, I found a lot of controversial sizings. That's why I decided to use only dimensions from the ISO standard for Excel profile timing belts. In Fusion 360, I've put all necessary parameters and formulas, which you can inspect by pausing the video. I'll explain all of them during motoring. As I said earlier, I'll have a 13cm width chassis, and for some visual hint I'm adding a rectangle to see the boundaries. The bigger pulley should be exactly in the middle, as low as possible. I'm using the pulley diameter with flange, since it represents the only restriction in size for matching to pulleys with belt. The smaller pulley will be connected to the motor shaft with the same center sharing. That means I need to take into account the motor diameter as well. The distance between pulleys depends on the pitch diameter and belt length and could be calculated with this scary formula. And now I clearly see that 1 to 2 reduction doesn't actually fit my restrictions since the motor exceeds the left boundary. Tweaking the pulley sizes, I've chosen the 22 tooth profile for big pulley since it's almost the same diameter as motor, which means the gearbox will be almost symmetrical. The good fit for small pulley is 12 tooth profile, which gives me overall reduction of 1 to 1.83. As the pulley sizes are defined, I can start modeling them. I'm using two circles, one of them represents the outer diameter, the second one has the tooth dips offset. Then I'm adding two lines and defining the angle between them. I constrain the widths between the bottom points. And lastly, to make the tooth sketch fully defined, I'm adding the horizontal constraint. The same approach is used to model the tooth for the second pulley. Once it's done, I extrude the pulleys to the width, which should be slightly larger than the belt width. Then, I cut one tooth from extruded cylinders. The ISO standard describes fillets for pulleys and belt teeth, but I found that during FDM printing such small fillets aren't necessary, since the home printers don't have enough precision. Moreover, you'll never have sharp corners because of the elephant foot effect. Now I want to populate the teeth with circular pattern. To do that, I'm adding an axis through the cylinder centers. In the pattern tool, I'm selecting features instead of bodies and specifying the teeth amount for each pulley. And finally, let's model the belt. It's actually not a necessary step, but by doing so, I can check my own calculations. If the belt correctly matches with the pulleys, it will work in real life. I'm starting by defining the belt pass. The crucial part is to use pitch diameters. Then I need to connect both pulleys. I'm doing it with a curve. If you enable curvature display, you'll notice that the transition from line to circle isn't smooth. To fix that, 
I'm adding garbage constraint. The second line is symmetric. To close the pass, I'm adding two arcs. The pass we created is used for placing belt teeth, but it doesn't represent any physical dimensions of the belt. To represent belt thickness, I'm adding two offsets. Then I want to model one tooth. It can be projected from the previous sketch. The only difference is that I'm extending it to pinch line. This will help us later to combine all teeth into a single body. Once the sketch is done, I'm extruding the tooth to the width of my belt. Then I populate it with the path pattern. My belt has 35 teeth. Distribution – spacing. The space is equivalent to the pitch value. Path direction will fix the object orientation. And now I'm extruding the belt itself to combine all bodies. I'm enabling pulley visibility to check the actual result. And you can see that one pulley has a mesh issue, which can be fixed by slightly rotating it. To connect the pulley to the motor, I'm adding flanges and modeling the coupling. Then I'm adding the motor. And here I want to show you one tricky part which cost me a failed print. If you look closer, you'll find that the shaft root is in the same plane as the motor body. But in real life, there is some spacing. Moreover, different motors may have slightly different geometry. That's why I made a 5mm space between the coupling and motor. To properly screw the coupling to the shaft, I'm adding a simple spacer which should help properly position the shaft. Next, I'm adding the shaft for bigger pulley. The only thing to mention is that I made one pulley flange as a part of the shaft. It helps properly align it. Also, I'm splitting the shaft into two parts. This approach significantly increased its strength, since now the printed layers are perpendicular to the applied force. And finally, the enclosure modeling. You may notice that I made the motor mount as a separate part. The idea is to test different materials without spending a lot of filament. During operation, the motor heats up and could warp the plastic. If so, I'd be able to quickly change the problematic part with some heat-resistant material. Because of the complex enclosure geometry, it's helpful to add all screws and nuts. This approach highlights all potential mistakes. After assembling the reducer, I wasn't satisfied with the belt tension, especially knowing that it could stretch during operation. The simplest solution I came up with is using a bearing. It can slide in upper part of the enclosure. To increase belt tension, I've added two screws which push the shaft lower. The only downside I see is possible asymmetry, which requires patient to be eliminated. But it shouldn't be adjusted too often, so I don't think it's a critical issue. Once the modeling is done, let's export gearbox to STL and print it. <laughs>